at the um, University of Hull. Um, so the plan for today is to give you just a little bit of context about the journey that's got us here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the City of Culture and um, give sort of an overview of, of our systems or set of systems. Um, and then Rory's going to give a bit more of the technical details. Um, and then we're not going to do a live, live demo, um, but I've got a screen record of the process that I, as a sort of digital archives practitioner, now am able to follow um, to make digital archives sort of preserved and, and accessible here. So, um, the City of Culture 2017, uh, you may have probably heard a little bit about it from, from Chris over the years. Um, but for, for Hull in the UK, it was a really special thing. Um, and it's something that um, attracted a lot of investment to Hull. Um, it's a scheme that's it's administered by uh, the UK government. And every four years, the title of the city of culture is given to one lucky city. And it gives them the opportunity to kind of act as a beacon for um, any kind of arts and cultural events that you could imagine, arts, drama, music, performance, community um, performance, things like that. And the university acted quite quickly because they realized quite quickly what a special thing this was gonna be for Hull and the potential that it had for transformation um, of the city and of its people, its economy, its education of everything. Um, and I think we also accepted that even if it didn't transform anything, that was remarkable in of itself. And it was something of quite some historical significance. Um, so our plan was really to try and capture a historical record of 2017. Um, so we worked with um, university, we worked with partners of the um, culture company who were the company that kind of administered the year's events. We worked with the, with the company itself and we ended up collecting over the course of 2017, several hundred thousand digital records um, that hopefully tell the story of 2017. So a lot of those will be quite administrative, um, the records of how events were staged, um, but we've also got high quality digital photographs, uh, videos, images of everything that happened across the year. Um, so it's a great resource, hopefully for, for researchers in the future, looking at the history of Hull, but also at the history of mass cultural events and how successful or not they can be. Um, so having amassed that big collection of digital archives, the plan really um, had to be to come up with a sophisticated way of um, storing them, of preserving them and making them accessible um, to the public. Um, we had a few things that were musts for our set of systems. So we want them to be interoperable and interoperable with some of the systems that we already use at the University of Hull. Um, there was an interest in um, using as much open source technology as possible, because that is something the University of Hull's long had an interest in, specifically the library, um, that it would have sophisticated preservation um, capability and that you would, we would be able to provide access publicly um, to our digital archives. Um, and that eventually we would be able to use that system or set of systems, not just for the records from the City of Culture, um, but for our other um, collections that we hold at the University of Hull. Um, so we actually went out to tender on a process and we've, and since then we've been working with co-sector. Um, so that's why, why Rory's here to, to pick up the, the more, more technical side of things. Um, and it's, it's taken a, a few years of, of working together um, to get to the point where this year we have been able to make our first digital archives live on our Blacklight catalogue, which has been really, really good to see. Um, so just to give a bit of context about the, the way that we're organised here at the university, um, the university archives um, have been for the last 10 or so years, possibly a bit more, more now actually, time does move on, doesn't it? Um, been in a partnership with the city, um, sort of city council. So there's a physical building in the, the centre of Hull that has held um, both the physical archives and the paper archives of the university and of the city council. Um, and so people can physically walk into that building and access records there. Um, but what we've had um, all along is a blacklight catalogue um, where people can search across collections held by both services seamlessly. Um, but underpinning that, um, 
we've got our own separate archival systems. So the university archives and the city archives have got separate instances of um, a cataloging software called CALM, um, which is really, really widely used in the UK. Um, it's a very, very common archival cataloging system, but they're completely separate. I don't have access to the cities. Cities don't have access to ours. Um, and there's also a local studies library running on, on Circe software. And what we do is that we export using encoded archival description um, and then import the catalogs into the Blacklight catalog and provide access that way. Um, so I think it was always the aim really to, to maintain that, that partnership publicly, um, but the digital archives work has really just been with the university. Um, okay. So this is my really, really simple diagram, um, and there's a lot more going on underneath um, of, of what, what we've chosen to do. And I think just to mention um, why, why we've chosen a few of the things that we have chosen. Um, so the, the way that records work through our system is we've got the digital archive files, um, and we pull that together with metadata, which I will demo when, when I show you the, the video, the screen record. We, and we upload those to Box. That's just cloud storage. Um, and the reason we use Box is the university uh, already had um, institutional access to that, which gave us um, unlimited um, storage. So it felt like a really good staging post for us. Um, they push through using Hull Synchronizer um, in, through Archivematica to do all the archival um, preservation processes, um, sent through to archival storage. And then when it comes to, to access, we're using Hyrax um, as a repository front end, Calm for um, descriptive metadata, and then we're pulling that through to the Blacklight catalog. So we're keeping publicly um, continuity with what we've always been able to offer um, users of our service, um, but it's underpinned by this big archival system that is now, now operational. So that's my simple diagram, and I'm gonna pass on to, to Rory to explain a bit more about the, the technical complexities. Thank you, Gora. Hey, cool. um, so, yeah, so, um, so Laura's simple diagram sort of took the, um, the uh, view of the process from uh, from the from from the user, but I thought I'd sort of rearrange it into how it looks um, architecturally, where it all sits, and what's what's actually driving a lot of the tra the, um, the transfer of of data and metadata. Um, and um, I have also um, helpfully numbered it so there's a there's a process here. So it's it's a horrible it's a horrible um, let a dev make a slide type affair, but we'll see if I can talk us all through it. So, um, as Laura mentioned, the process starts um, uh, well before really even we get to box the, the the archivists work on the files and metadata when they prepare those. They then um, uh, upload them to the um, the file sharing platform Box, which um, sits at the University of Hull in this case. Um, and so we configured that that's got a, a little API with um, web hooks on it so that it will um, send a, a send out a message um, when certain things happen. So we were able to configure this. I think that uh, um, the action that, that the archivist Laura in this case would take would be to um, share a folder that she's already prepared with files and metadata um, with a with a special user. Um, that, that fires off a little request then um, to the whole synchronizer. Um, and the whole synchronizer is um, one of a, a, a number of um, apps that are sitting in an Azure tenancy that a co-sector are looking after. Um, it's also part of a, of a Kubernetes cluster in this case. Um, that is, it's a, a custom Rails app. Um, and basically it just manages all the, uh, the, the jobs. You can see most of the arrows are going through the whole synchronizer. Um, as my dog is um, trying to get in. Um, and we use um, the Gush workflow um, gem to help manage that. It's been really useful for that um, process. So um, the first thing that uh, will happen, obviously, it will, it will manage the transfer of metadata files to uh, across from Box. Um, 
to uh, the synchronizer um, and all the, all the time it will also send progress messages back to box. So there's a little um, text file just appears in the directory that Laura would have been working on and she'll also get emails as well. Um, so that's the first thing uh, that happens then. Um, so then it does a bit of pro processing and preparation. The next step is that it um, prepares uh, transfer package for Archivematica um, that it, it, it uh, transfers over there. Um, so you're using the API, actually, the, the actual transfer of the of the, um, the, the the payload really is is via um, SSH because um, that's how you have to do it. But then the the management of the transfer and ingest process that happens in Archivematica, if you're if anyone's familiar with that, I don't know, but that uses the um, the is driven by Hull Synchronizer using the API. Um, Archivematica will do its thing. It's been configured um, to uh, to work um, in this case. Um, producing the um, the levels of, um, of archival um, processes that are required by the University of Hull. Um, it produces archival information packages and um, dissemination packages, so apes and dips. Um, the, um, the dips are returned um, they're collected again when, when that process is finished, uh, the whole synchronizer will collect the dips and um, then it will create some um, uh, packages that are deposited into the um, Hyrex, the Sambera stack. Um, so we've got two models that we're working with an archive, archival package basically um, collects um, a lot of the uh, key information around the, uh, the archival package. Um, and that's a metadata only package that we, that is, um, uh, the parent of the digital archival objects, which actually um, contain the the file that the that, uh, um, that uh, the dip contains. Those two objects are both then um, stage four and on now are uh, deposited to um, Hyrax uh, using uh, the sword gem Willow sword. Um, and where are we? Right. Yes. When that's complete. Um, um the um so the so when that's that that process is complete and there's a, the, an identifier for those packages that are sitting in the repository uh returns to the synchronizer synchronizer can then um a, a create a, a calm record for this item so this is where it can create a calm record it's got all the metadata that that, that, that have come uh essentially from the um Archivist. It's also got information now on the digital archival objects and where they live that are associated with this um, with this record. Um, and so a uh, calm record then will appear. Um, and so this is back to the University of Hull. And calm has always been a bit of a mystery to me. I um, uh, we've <laughs> managed to um, create collections in it. Um, and then this part, I, this is where I, I need then need to sort of becomes a little bit manual this process I would say I would uh, check in with Laura to make sure that stuff is okay and it looks like it should in calm um so to in order then um uh, and we, this is a we've got a quite a solid um process here or out or a solid collection of um items uh between Archivematica and Hyrax uh, and calm but really we uh the we want to be able to showcase this stuff um not keep it in hidden away in dusty archives so the next step and to where it gets a little bit manual is that once the a collection is complete and has been um reviewed by um an archivist um the ead um um as mentioned before by laura um can be exported um and so that's transferred over to us at co-sector where we can um, run a custom importer that will do two things. One thing it does is it takes the um, the metadata in that EAD XML and create a nice um, record, uh, solar record for Blacklight to display. Um, part of that, though, it also because uh, it because that EAD contains a reference back to the digital archival objects. It's able to um, to interact with Hyrax as well. So. Um, I should have said at step four, whenever stuff is deposited, it's just deposited in a closed state. 
um, whenever we get EAD from um, from Hull and run the importer, that's the, that, that's our flag to say, right, it's time to open this. So it will make that DAO um, uh, public um, and it will build a, um, a black light record, a solar record um, based on that. Um, uh, the other important thing is, ah, uh, yes, the uh, other important, uh, so as well as adding a couple of these, these models to Hyrax, we also um, um, did some work around the uh, IIIF manifest to allow, um, to allow those to serve, uh, so Hyrax will serve um, IIIF manifests for um, uh, other media items, so PDFs and uh, images, uh, not images, sorry, it does that already. Um, videos and audios and so on and so forth. Um, so this then allowed us, so the black light um, uh, has been um, um, amended to uh, take advantage of that. And so the so we, we've, we've got a universal viewer, hopefully Laura will be able to show you this properly. The universal viewer sits in black light and it can basically show us where possible the um, those digital archival objects along with all the metadata that's come through this process. So that is hopefully beginning to come clear when Laura shows her, um, shows us your video of what this all looks like in the real world, rather than me trying to take you through this lovely diagram. Let's hope so. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing that and I'll try and share a video. I'm hoping you can see uh, a screenshot of Calm, our catalog. Yep, I can see nodding, fab. So this is Calm, this is, this is the back end and this is where we uh, catalog our archive collections. Um, so you can see it looks fairly old fashioned. Um, I think it is, um, <laughs> but we've got uh, the structure of our collection down the side. Um, and then the, this is sort of the meat of, of where we do our cataloging. Um, so it's where we catalog physical records, paper records, but also now where we um, catalog digital records. Um, and part of the process for cataloging digital records is to create that structure, because um, that gives us something to um, point uh, the, the various systems towards in order to import um, a bit of metadata. Um, so this is the reference number and basically we need that to, to point, um, like I say, to, to point the systems towards where they need to, to put their, their metadata. Um, so I shall take you through the process of actually ingesting material into um, the digital archive system. Um, so we start just in, um, in SharePoint at the moment is where we're storing um, our digital archives. Um, there's a certain amount of prep work that needs to go into um, preparing them for ingest. So just making sure we don't have um, masses of duplication um, and ensuring that um, everything's in the structure and the place that we need it to be in. Um, and looking through as well to make sure that there isn't too much, well, or any um, personal data that could go online so it's about flagging that at the beginning of the system um, so there's two piece, bits of uh, metadata that go with our records once once they are prepped for ingest um, they're both csv files one is the um, file csv metadata and that's sort of the technical metadata um, and we can produce that uh, automatically using a script that was developed for us by CoSector. And um, that's pretty easy to use. We just copy and paste the um, folder location into the script um, and that runs the process automatically and creates the CSV. You can see, there you go, it's created that CSV automatically in place. Once that is run through, um, it should come up on the screen. Yep, so that's complete. And this is what is created. Um, so it's fairly simple. It's just the file path, the file name for everything that is within those folders, file size in bytes, and then a checksum. 
the other bit of uh, metadata that um, Archivematica requires us to create is uh, more descriptive and that is a much more um, manual process and it's the process that I as an archivist I'm used to doing um, so it is just about describing what we've got um, so I have recorded the process of me doing that um, but I have sped it up um, because it's it's excruciating watching someone typing stuff out um, and making judgments and deleting them um, but the 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 data that we need um, we obviously we need the file name um, or, or for the digital objects um, these the accession and the reference number they relate back to calm that system um, we need to give it a title mark whether they are for open access or if they contain um, personal data they, those would be closed um, descriptive metadata this is the bit that is difficult to watch um, but this is, like I say, this is a process that we're very much used to as archivists of uh, describing what we see um, in order that people can uh, make judgments about what is useful for their research. Um, so we save that um, with a description.csv file title. Those are always the same. And save it with the records themselves. And then the next process, as we, as we sort of mentioned earlier, is to upload those to Box as a staging point. Um, so that's a fairly easy uh, drag and drop process. You can see things getting uploaded into box. And then in order to start their journey into um, or through Hyrax, um, it is just a process of sharing that folder within box with whole synchronizer. Um, you can see we've got an email address for whole sync and just pressing send is the trigger for a whole host of processes to start. So within um, whole synchronizer, that sharing process has started a transfer workflow um, on screen. Um, and that is just the process of, of transferring the files. And that is the completed workflow. And that um, the completion of that workflow starts the next workflow, which is the review process. Um, and that is checking that the files that we've uploaded match with the metadata that was uploaded with them. I would say this is probably the um, part of the process which um, most likely to run into problems on um, and that is because this is the part that interacts with human error so this is where I might have put the wrong uh, file name or something in like that in, the, in there um, but if we do run into error we do get an error message telling us, us where, we, where we've fallen down. So the finishing of the review process pushes it through to the last stage which is ingest um, and that um, pushes the package through to Archivematica deposits files in Hyrax and also pulls um, metadata through to CARM. So we can follow the progress through Archivematica. Um, so there we see the new, um, uh, the new jobs have, have arrived on the transfer page. And this is when they're all done. Lots and lots of microservices. So lots and lots of things have been triggered um, by whole synchronizer. Okay, so back to the record in CALM. Um, it's actually pulled through, it's created a record in CALM. It's pulled through that descriptive metadata that I typed in um, earlier um, at the metadata creation stage. And it's also filled in this URL field um, with a little bit of code that if you copy and paste that into um, the Hyrax URL, that will take you directly to the um, digital object within Hyrax. Um, so this is our Hyrax setup. Um, we can use it as, as you do Hyrax to, to search through and find relevant uh, material. Um, and it's also where we can um, do controls on um, access. So if there's records that need to be closed because of, of digital um, data protection, that's where we can control um, access. And this is our Blacklight catalog. Um, so users to our catalog won't have noticed a huge, huge change until they see digital records. Um, 
that are, are within the collection. Um, so you can see we've now got these tabs down the side um, and those are where people can access in browser um, certain types of records. So we've got um, images and we can do video, audio, and we can view those online through, through Universal Viewer. So this is sort of, these are plans for um, a, a light show that happened on um, it's a very famous aquarium in Hull. Uh, so this is will have huge relevance to the people of Hull. Um, and then um, we, for all digital um, records available online, we also have this access page where people can download um, copies of the records. Um, and that includes any of the records that you could view through those tabs. But then there are some record types that you won't be able to view for those tabs and, and you can download those as you wish. And I think that takes me to the end of the, the whistle stop uh, tour of uh, the process as a digital archivist of um, using our digital archive. So I'm going to stop the share there. And um, I hope that's been helpful and interesting. And if you've got any questions, go ahead.